All right, so I guess this is uh, my very first podcast on my channel. Uh, pretty simple. I uh, bring one of my favorite content creators in. We have a discussion. That's about it. Um, I'm, of course, a fighting game guy, so we will talk about some fighting game stuff, but I will try to cover whatever the content creator usually goes over as well. But uh, today I got Sly Mufasa, which is a fellow content creator on TikTok. He's uh, honestly turning into one of my favorite uh, content creators on the app. Um, he does a bunch of stuff with some of the other big comic book content creators on there, and I just really like his stuff. We've been playing some matches um, recently. In the background, you will see us playing Dragon Ball Fighters, where he's absolutely annihilating me. Um, we actually had to uh, re-record, because the first edit of this was pretty bad, but I think the second edit was really good. But other than that, um, please enjoy the podcast, and make sure you follow Sly on all social media plats, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy! All right, so first off, everyone, if you're just joining, uh, welcome. I'm uh, talking to a fellow TikToker, this is Sly Mufasa. He's been killing it when it comes to comic books and a whole bunch of other fun stuff on the TikTok app. Um, so, Sly, first and foremost, why did uh, you start TikTok? Um, so, it was really just because of, uh, you know, King Lion um, and, you know, him just making a bunch of videos about certain comic books but really it started off as like some controversial stuff i'm not gonna lie it was just uh mainly some people basically lying about what he said or calling him out during certain things and not you know tagging him to where he can you know defend himself and i didn't like that so that's how it kind of started off and it just kind of springboarded from there all right um so you definitely play uh or uh, mainly do comics right so uh you've kind of evolved into uh, mainly defending King Lion and some of the other uh, tic- uh, TikTokers that also do comic book stuff. There's a bunch of drama going on. I saw a couple today as an example. Um, I, there's someone tagged you in a video that people are getting banned like crazy, right? So what's your yeah. opinion on that whole nonsense? Uh, it's just uh, the internet, to be honest with you. It is probably something that's never going to end, no matter what platform you're on. Um, the only thing I can really recommend is just be as positive as you possibly can be, right? Yeah. Um, like, I think I follow but, pretty much yeah. everyone you follow, too. Like, I'm a big fan of, like, the, your whole circle of uh, TikTokers. Like, you guys take it very seriously, and I think my I said it bef- uh, in the first time. Because people are listening, this is the second time I've had to record this because I'm, I'm not a good content creator. <laughs> but, um... Uh, you guys really cover your your tracks, you know, like you really go into it and then have all the facts straight before and not just mm-hmm. going with your gut feeling, which I have so much respect for that because there's some other aspects of TikTok, like especially in the anime community. It's all by like, well, I think it's this character because I like them more. Like you actually have facts behind what you have to say. And uh, like I know you've been really hard on the whole Tobey Maguire Spidey Man <laughs> thing recently. So like out of all the Spider-Man um, like, have you come to a conclusion of which one you think is uh, the strongest? I guess. I personally still think that Tom, not Tom Holland, but Tobey Maguire is the strongest Spider-Man that we've seen on screen. Okay. Um, just before you know, like, because I told you before, uh, a lot of Tom Holland's feats are kind of like anti feats, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's probably like the wrong word to use because I think it has a different context. But basically, my envision of what he's doing, if you like, pay attention to like the small details of you know his movies and you may have to watch it a couple times to actually see it Mm -hmm. but he fails in a lot of his so-called feats right yeah um so like the one the big one that's going on right now is like oh he you know held a ferry boat together and like in my videos if you've seen them i've used this analogy a couple of times like if i'm working out at the gym right Mm -hmm. and i put a super heavy weight on the bar and I can't push it back up. That means I'm not fighting the resistance of the weight. And I'm not fighting the resistance of gravity. Because gravity is always going to pull down on it. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with the boat. He wasn't fighting against the weight of the two halves. And he wasn't fighting against the resistance of the water. Because the boat was still slipping away from him. So I don't count that as a feat. Whereas Toby in his um, in his train feat. Yeah, there were supports on the you know the train tracks, but they literally got obliterated, so they really didn't even mean much. Mm-hmm. He literally stopped the train with his webs and his strength. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know Tom did not 
save the boat. You didn't save that tower in Far From Home, which is another big one that people like to use. Um, so yeah, I just think he hasn't shown enough strength feats yet to be able to say that he's the strongest, but he does have the most potential out of all three of them. Yeah. And he's been in more films, so I'm pretty sure No Way Home is not going to be his last one. He still has stuff to show. Yeah, and that's not even including in the possibility that we're going to get the other Spider-Man in this movie, which wouldn't that be awesome if Tobey Maguire just shows up Holland in this movie to just, like, really hammer your point home? <laughs> if, like, oh, yeah, that, that would be funny. But to be honest with you, I would not have any issue if Tom Holland just, like, like let's say it's like Toby. Toby is struggling to handle something, and Tom's like, "No, we get out of here. I got this." And then does what he was struggling to do. Mm-hmm. I'd I'd be completely happy with that. That would show that he has you know some agency, which is what I think is missing from the Tom Holland films. He doesn't have agency because if you notice with uh, barring the like you know little facets of help that they had here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, an example is like Toby had help from the citizens of New York in Spider-Man one. And, you know, Andrew had help from Gwen and Gwen's father. But besides those two things, they really did everything on their own. Whereas Tom has had multiple suits either made directly by Tony Stark or made to- by Tony Stark's, you know, resources and money. So, and he's got on the team, you know, they've been flying solo. So I feel like he doesn't have agency yet. All right, yeah. Um, I, I'm assuming your favorite superhero is Spidey, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Is it is it Peter Parker Spidey, or is it a different Spidey that it's your favorite? Yeah, no, it's, it's Peter Parker Spider-Man. It's yeah. probably because I've just been reading so many Peter Parker Spider-Man comic books for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, don't get me wrong, I love, you know, Gwen. Um, I'm a big fan of... Freaking Miles Morales. I'm mm. starting to read Silk. I'm not that big oh, of a really? fan of. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Silk is something I didn't even know that it existed until I started looking up like, you know, the different spider costumes, and I was like, well, she looks cool. Um, let me figure out what she's about. Isn't it twenty ninety nine? Is it twenty ninety nine Spider Man? Is that it? Uh, That's Miguel O'Hara. Yeah, like I, I actually was really shocked and enjoyed that one. Like I, I didn't think I was gonna like that at all, but it was actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, this, this, for, that for I feel exactly way. I didn't think yeah. I was going to like him. Yeah, it was like, um, that's how I usually, I love when that happens, when you start, like, reading a comic book, where you're like, eh, this seems kind of like a boring character, and you're like, three pages, and okay, I'm kind of hooked now. <laughs> I love when that happens. Yeah, um, yeah. so, um, yeah, Peter would be my favorite. I think it's just because you, you, to be honest with you, you can't beat a classic. Yeah. Well, and this is a character that was built from the ground up to be a child superhero mm-hmm. that wasn't a sidekick. And was supposed to be relatable. So, yeah. um, did you watch the animated series as a kid? Which one? Uh, I guess the the OG one, the one on Fox Kids, the ones with Peter. The one from like the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I think all of us kind of just like we're running home to watch all of those animated series <laughs> as a kid. Oh yeah, those yeah. are the best. Ones. Um, like in fact, I made a freaking a video. Um, and it wasn't necessarily about that particular Spider Man. But it was more about, like, um, a lot of people think that Tobin Maguire, for some reason, is not comic book accurate. Um, And he may not be comic book accurate to, like, the most recent, uh, you know, comic books about Spider-Man. But if you look back to, like, 1962, 1942, whatever, Peter Parker first debuted. Yeah. Tobin Maguire is, like, a spitting image of that Peter Parker, right? Yeah. Um, And I was just thinking that for, you know, this animated series from the 90s if he was just a tad bit cooler and a tad bit taller and a tad bit bigger that would be toby mcguire yeah i think my biggest issue with toby mcguire and this is just my own opinion right so Mm -hmm. um i guess looking back at it now he did not seem like he was a kid in high school like you can like looking back at that movie now like he's like a 25 year old playing a teenager <laughs> like that like looking back at it now that's how i feel about looking at it cuz all those characters they weren't teenagers those were all like in their late 20 20s you know what yeah. i mean all those guys were uh every actor in that movie was a little bit older um i will say i think, no, I William, think william defoe I think, was a great villain too that was another thing that i always loved about the original spidey yeah as far as like them being old and i got two points on that uh one, I think Tobey Maguire was actually older than the uh, the teacher from the first Oh, really? Film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, which is hilarious. Um, and then, two is like, you got to remember that, you know, 
times are changing and genetics are actually pretty changing, right? Yeah. So if you go back and look at, you know, the time from, because that movie was made in, like, what, 2002? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's a, I'm not going to lie, Pete, if you go back and look at pictures from that time, high schoolers did kind of look like them. It's just that now high schoolers look nothing like high schoolers back from 2002. Yeah. I, it's that classic thing if you go watch Grease. And, like, you look at oh, everyone yeah. in that movie. Every single one of those per- people were, like, in their late 30s. And we're just trying yeah. to play like them as they're, like, just teenagers in high school. It's actually it, – looking at it now is hilarious. But um, well, outside of Spidey, uh, who are your other comic book fans? Like, who, what other superheroes do you like? Um, I'm a really, really, really big fan of Wolverine. Wolverine? Um, nice. Yeah, if Spider-Man did not exist, then Wolverine would be my favorite. All right. Um, uh, I definitely notice a um, a lean on Marvel a little bit here. Do you like DC or? Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, Shazam is actually my favorite character from DC. Really? Okay. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm assuming you want him to come back in Injustice Three. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he should have been killed. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, I think that you, I, I I've made like a bunch of YouTube videos about this. In fact, I'm making an Injustice video this week for YouTube, uh, talking about uh characters that are are dead in uh, the injustice universe but yeah uh i think it totally is doable like you can bring anyone back at this point. oh yeah they can yeah, yeah. it's comic books they can bring somebody yeah back. like um if they do like i don't know if you follow uh like the green lantern comics at all but like there's this like big villain named necron in the blackest night um mm. like he brings back everybody as a zombie and like I think that'd be really, oh yeah I remember that right like I would be so cool if they like brought back all the characters that have died in Injustice because you know how awesome would be like dead Shazam coming back to face Superman you know how, like like character growth that would be for Superman it'd be absolutely epic if that happened I would love to watch yeah. that also yeah like, and it would get um and it would get the other Lantern Corps some screen time besides you know the tried and true green red and yellow yeah like because um, I feel like those are the only ones that are really represented in any other media outside of comic books yep. um besides dc universe online i don't know if you know about that game oh absolutely i, I played that yeah so for they for show years. all the other lantern of course if i'm remembering correctly yeah absolutely i think i actually i think i was more or less trying to become an orange lantern character like lara fleece is one of my favorite like characters in comics not just in dc just in general i think he's just a, yeah i love goofy weird characters in all forms of fiction so if you give me a character that's just doofy i am immediately gonna fall in love with the character like like snorlax is a pokemon i love Snorlax. Oh, like this, my favorite pokemon. yeah he's like the goofiest he's just he sleeps he's <laughs> i love he's what i aspire with, to be I, right <laughs> just taking a nap the entire time sounds awesome yeah, all day um, but Lara um, Fleas is a big one. Like Deadpool is obviously another big one. Um, I yeah. love characters like that. Harley Quinn. Um, any characters that kind of just make me giggle, I'm always going to like gravitate towards them than other superheroes. I will say Lara Fleas has the best, like, uh, like the best Lantern Oath, just because it's hilarious. Yeah, mine is mine. <laughs> and what's yeah, yours yeah. is mine. <laughs> uh, he, uh, it's, it's very interesting what they did there. I actually own his first appearance. That's actually one of my... Uh, Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of that, uh, what are some of your pride and joys when it comes to comic books? Um, so here's the thing. So my comic book collection kind of got basically lost in the wind when I went off to the military. Sure. Uh, my mom like moved to California, and then all my stuff was basically like lost. Yeah. So I'm kind of like slowly building it up. So I don't have any of the like – like I used to have the original – not the original, but like a copy of the original like back in black issue for Spider-Man. Really? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, I, now I just had to like buy a trade. Um, yeah, but that's gone. I ended up getting a uh, a Phoenix. I can't remember exactly what what issue it was or what run it was from, but I got a Phoenix graded for my stepdad um, and gave that to him. I was able to pick up a what, like, uh, the C- the Phoenix Saga. You mean? No, it was just one singular issue, and it wasn't. Oh, okay, okay. Saga. I was gonna was say just, you had a yeah. graded Phoenix Saga, dude. Those go for like three hundred dollars a piece. Easy. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I only paid like eighty bucks to get this one graded. Yeah, nice. Um, I don't know if you know this, but comic books they're uh, they're all illustrated on these giant, giant pieces of paper. Yes. Right. So, um, I got some like very, very vintage like giant pieces of paper illustrations of some star Wars comic books. Oh, that's awesome. 
Yeah, and I gave that to I gave that to my stepdad because he's like super super into Star Wars. Nice. Uh, like my big yeah. uh, call to fame is I actually have uh, uh, the first appearance of Nightwing, um, and uh, the, I have the entire Judas contract. And I actually, if you ever watch some of my TikToks, you may have seen all of them on my wall. Uh, Nightwing's my all time favorite superhero. I've always been like you said earlier about like characters you can relate to when you're a kid i just love the robins all of them i love red hood i love tim drake i love nightwing i love damien i love anyone i actually to be honest i'm not the biggest fan of batman uh but i like all of his protégés if you know what i mean those characters uh like have depth to their character you know what i mean while batman clearly is just they they just ride the same shit over and over and over with that character so that's the interesting about that's the interesting about that dynamic right because i don't like batman uh pretty much at all either really yeah. but following the ki- yeah, uh, just, king lion uh... i just don't like the uh <laughs> the whole f- like a fact that you know like my whole thing is like if you're not willing to kill someone that's as bad as like the joker someone that definitely needs to be taken out for the greater good of humanity um without like going crazy then you shouldn't be doing what you're doing right yeah something okay. that like i saw like i don't know how your opinion on this is is like it, he even stops people from doing doing the murder. Like that's one of the things. Like I don't want to dirty my hands. You know, what I mean, like if I was a superhero, I know damn straight I don't think I'd be able to do that. Right? I don't. Maybe like in the thick of it, if like someone like murdered a puppy in front of me, I don't know. Maybe I'd lose my mind. But like I know <laughs> I personally in them that mind can't do it. But Joe Schmo over here, who's also a superhero, doesn't mind getting his hands dirty to take care of that stuff. Like. I know it sounds like kind of morbid and gruesome and it's like a morality thing, mm-hmm. but like green arrow, an example, green arrow would have zero issue throwing like an arrow through the Joker's throat. You know what I mean? Right. But like, so like, that's where like, I think as a character, it would make sense for Batman to just be like, okay, well I'm going to look away right now. You, you guys do your thing. Cause that's not me, but you guys can do what you want to do, but yeah, like, it's like he, I'm not doing it. Exactly. Like I know it's, right. but that's uh, his thing. He just drives home that point and it's, I don't want to say it's derivative, but it's it. I'm kind of over it. The best Elseworld comics for me are when characters uh, do the opposite of what they do. Like that's why I love Injustice so much because Superman just lost yeah. his shit. Like I think that's why I love Injustice so much is because that is what we kind of want to see Batman do. Like when they introduced the Batman who laughs recently in the last uh, couple of years uh, through the Metal Verse. Like that was crazy to me because they just that's exactly what I would expect the complete and total opposite of just like Batman, like a Batman Joker just losing his mind and killing everyone. That's the complete opposite because there's like there's no middle ground for Batman, which kind of sucks because uh, it just doomed like he, the character is doomed to just repeat the same arc over and over and over again. Um, yeah, and it's not like we want him to kill everybody because I remember somebody asked me. Um, cause I had like this, it wasn't as huge as the Spider-Man debate, yeah. <laughs> but I had a pretty, a pretty big debate, at least for my follower account at that time. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> um, about like a, whether or not he should, he should kill people. And my only argument was the Joker, um, because I'm not going to have him kill Victor Freeze, who's only doing what he needs to do yeah. to, you know, to save his wife. That's literally his only goal. Um, and then people kept bringing up, well, what do you think about, like, the Kingpin or all these other, you know, Spider-Man Marvel villains? Because that's, like, the dichotomy is that even though Spider-Man has powers, that they're basically – him and Batman are basically seen as, like, the same thing. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Um, wait, and I was like, well, you really got to think Doc, about what these he? what these people are doing. And, well, at least for Spider-Man's villains, a lot of them really just want money. Yeah. Like, we didn't and when Spidey... they're not out here filling graveyards. When Spidey died originally, like it was happened, what like maybe like eight years ago, when Spidey did that final battle with Doc Ock, they both killed each other, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like right there, Spidey's willing to do do what he needs to do to save Aunt May. It was Aunt May and uh, Mary Jane, right? He killed himself for that. Mm-hmm. If I'm correct, uh, I have to go back and read the comic. I'm pretty sure that was the the fight that went down. Hey, there was a comic book where Deadpool, 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 Africans suck at saying things. Uh, <laughs> no, Deadpool good, ends dude. up. Uh, he ends up stopping Peter from killing somebody, and it's not because it wasn't the right the right thing to do, right? Because this person definitely needed to, you know, go on to the upper room. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't the right thing for Peter because instead of doing it out of like the the goodwill of the people and the goodwill of the city, he was more doing it out of revenge. Yeah. And then Deadpool went to go kill him. So it's not. Here's the thing: it's not that superheroes shouldn't kill people. Yeah. It's the fact that 
it's that, literally the know, Joker. It's like the that, that's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the literally Joker. just the Joker. Yeah, and I'm and I'm kind of tired of that whole the dichotomy where I'm yeah. starting to think that people are right where Batman doesn't want anything to happen to the Joker. It's weird, right? That whole argument like is very interesting to me, right? Like because when you yeah. have the argument between the Joker, like if the Joker really just was dead, like I feel that, that would actually be a big part of the rest of the villains especially in gotham be like oh shit did he really kill the joker hey, they kind of explored that Yo, in like, the arkham series to be honest with you yeah because he died in arkham he died in arkham city and a lot of the villains thought that batman killed him and then once you pick up arkham knight uh jim gordon was like i was like, i was waiting for the eventual you know power struggle of the villains but it didn't came it what didn't came it didn't come for over a year so yeah, here's the thing: is like, what are you really losing with the Joker dead? Like, you mean to tell me these writers who were insanely freaking smart cannot come up with a new villain to do this dynamic with and yeah. change it up? Well, the thing is, like, that's one thing I will say. Um, um, I may not be the biggest fan of Batman, but his villains are awesome. I've always liked. Yes, his Rosie Alley is amazing. Yeah, I'm not gonna like, lie. Like, I I will say this until I'm blue in the face. Like, Scarecrow to me is one of the coolest villains in history. Like, uh, oh yeah, he's, cool. he's just a cool character. He used to be like a, a guy who was scared of everything, and then his whole concept is just to take out your biggest fear. Like, uh, what, what's the thing in uh, uh, the thing in Harry Potter? Why well, can't remember the name of the? I have no idea. I don't know. No, nah, it's, it's like Potter, the, there's that uh, like thing that shows up in it. Uh, a Dementor, I think it is. It shows your biggest <clears throat> fear in front of you. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like Ugh. Well, that's the ironically line. his biggest fear is Batman. Yeah, right, exactly, and that's another thing that's so crazy. Like, there was that one um, comic, it was actually The Darkest Night, I just mentioned a minute ago, uh, where the Scarecrow becomes a yellow lantern. Like, the feet, yeah. that, that's so cool! That is so cool! Like, I can't get over how awesome that idea is. Like, I love, oh, yeah, the villain's awesome. Bane's another one that I think is really cool. Bane, Bane is my favorite Batman villain. Yeah? Um, is yeah, that... you're talking about someone who had enough willpower and enough just, you know, just sheer strength to one not only take over a prison after he was put in a coma by falling over and almost cracking his neck mm -hmm. but he made himself so intelligent to the point where he was able to deduce batman's entire identity where he was stationed at and how to you know break the bat in the most efficient way bane is awesome yeah. bane gets slept on um well there was a uh, in the new run in DC, uh, not new run. I guess it's a couple of years now. When they did Rebirth, uh, one of the entire arcs was Bane, where Bane was pretty much like, "I'm not a goddamn clown. I'm not some cat. I'm not a penguin. I'm not some scarecrow. I am Bane. I'm a different breed. I'm here yeah. to just fight you." And like, I just love that. Like, uh, like he doesn't want to be considered one of batman's rogues gallery he wants it to be a completely separate thing and i, I there's a lot of respect when it comes because also there's a sense of pride with bane too yeah uh, he, that's always been super cool to me but and i just want to get this out there i don't want people thinking that i just hate batman like vehemently right mm -hmm. because Bane, batman has a lot of very very great storylines uh mm -hmm. one in particular is where i don't know it was kind of hinted at that bane and batman were actually like brothers really yeah, so I can't remember exactly what happened, and I'm not going to be able to remember the issue yeah. it was. But um, it was kind of hinted that Martha Wayne um, kind of had relations with, you know, Bane's dad. Interesting. Or, yeah. Um, and so they, this whole thing happened. Uh, Batman, not Batman, but Bruce ends up giving him, like, some fun so he can, like, I think he was, like, trying to turn his life around. Yeah. Well, there has been and, a couple of And it was kind of hinted yeah. at, you know. There's been a few arcs where, like, uh, I, I saw the message. I couldn't tell you the exact comic either, but a lot of the he, a lot of the villains will actually st uh, will actually go defend orphanages because they used to be one. You know what I mean? Like, and I yeah. always thought that was really cool. Like, yeah, they, they they're still bad guys, but they have a code. You know what I mean? Like, yes, mm -hmm. they, they will want to like. Uh, poison ivy wants to poison everyone because they don't eat enough vegetables but at the same point she's gonna like protect the one orphanage because she used to be one you know what i mean all that kind of stuff to me has always been like th there's m a lot of depth to these villains and i feel like they get slapped on more and everyone just wants to talk about the they uh, just want to talk about spider uh like batman soups and wonder woman over and over and over again when i would rather have like a complete 
storylines of all the villains and like what's going on mm-hmm. in their lives than honestly most of the superheroes right now. Like I liked um don't even worry, I didn't really like this game. Um, but the Telltale series, like Batman game, mm-hmm. I liked what they did with Oswald Cobblepot. 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 Right? Penguin's actually my favorite Batman villain. Oh, really? Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> but That's I, very I, interesting. Yeah, I love the Penguin, dude. Because, like, uh, I think maybe the Danny DeVito Penguin when I was a kid. But he terrified oh, okay. me as a kid. Like, when I was a kid yeah, watching no, that. that was scary. It was, it was creepy, you know what I mean? And I like him because he is not like the rest. He's like... Uh, there's like the, all the crime families, like the Falcons and all of those guys. But then, like, then there's the hardcore villains, like Poison Ivy, Bane, Scarecrow. But then there's Cobblepot, who's kind of like a mix of both. I always thought that was super intriguing to me, because there's a lot of arcs where Batman kind of saw him as a joke, you know what I mean? And like, right. uh, when in truth, like that drives him crazy. Like it makes him so angry. It makes him want to like kill the Batman. I'll pay anyone who kills the Batman. I I don't know why. I just find that. Especially with like how much like legitimate power that he holds in Gotham. He does. Yeah. Like I've always find the penguin is slept on as a character. Like they don't like when he shows up, he's like, he's the money guy or he's the, he's the crime family. I think he's slept on totally as a good villain. And like, I am sure you want this as well. Like if you could have your own, you could write your own story arc for Batman mm-hmm. or like not Batman, but just your own story arc. I would probably write a story arc where penguins, the villain. Cause I, I guarantee I could write an Epic story where you'd be like, Holy crap, this is way more interesting than I thought and give penguin a time in the sun. I guarantee I could write a story that would be super interesting. And uh, here's the thing. I would do it to where like Batman needs to like really flex his detective skills. Because if you notice, he doesn't really, he's not really a detective anymore. Yeah, he has Tim do everything for him now. Yeah, he, well, that, and then um, another, like, if, I'm not going to lie, he has a ton of followers, but I highly, I highly respect this creator, and I feel like he's kind of underrated. Comics related. Oh, I love this related, man is yeah. making me. Yeah, this man is making me love Superman, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. Big Blue. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, like, I, the main problem that I have with Bruce is that his fans think he could, he, like, he's a literal god, and he can do anything and it's like dude yeah. that's not the case you guys are undermining what bruce was actually meant for yeah by saying he can like solo any verse and with prep time he can beat anybody like you know no one else uses prep time that prep time argument is so stale dude i'm so sick and tired of hearing that argument <laughs> so, right, so like um like when everyone asks me like oh what's well what's your favorite you know batman storyline or if you made another one what would it be like it would be like the long halloween i think that is literally the best batman storyline ever yeah that's definitely it would be probably my top three for batman absolutely like um did you ever read uh batman eternal no i have not batman eternal i'm not gonna admit i have not read a lot of batman stuff yeah uh batman eternal is like my all-time favorite Uh, i'm not gonna spoil it but like the ending uh, was a little bit. It was just like crazy. Like the start, you, you did not know what was going on to like the last like last comic book, and I love when that happens. Long Halloween's definitely other one, and uh, I I like everything with like the family. But when when Batman died, the battle for the cowl to this day is like one of my all time favorite comic books with Jason coming back. Like yeah, I, that was a good one. Like dude, I absolutely love. Like, like I said, I love the Robins. So like to me, it was all when Dick picked up the mantle i've always been a huge fan of that well that's a question. i'm not gonna lie i love all the robins except for damien damien's a little prick i totally yeah, he's, understand to be honest, he's a, he's prick. a <laughs> spitting image of what like i feel like he's a spitting image of what people see batman as mm-hmm. like this like a, uh the arrogant asshole who knows and everything that can do everything yeah. and can beat everyone and doesn't need help and all this other stuff He's um, almost a parody of Batman to an extent. Yeah, he's almost yeah. like a parody of Batman. Yeah. Also, if I was writing a Batman comic, I would tone down some of the stuff that he can do. Because I was talking to King Lion, and literally, like, he, Batman is so smart that in one of his comics, he literally looks at a puddle, and he knows exactly where he is in the city. That makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, like, I understand certain... Like, there was this one comic with Batman uh, in The Flash, and The Flash actually was able to figure something out before Batman, and it bothered Batman. I'm like, come on, dude. This is The Flash we're talking about here? Like, He can literally think, like, 
yeah at the speed of light yeah like it drives me nuts like i think they that's a one character that they do almost okay like uh i feel like the flash like they, they they've been trying way too much concentrating on like the whole time to- like the trap time travel shit with the flash lately they need to work mm-hmm. on the other stuff he can do like like the fact that he can summon lightning bolts is barely used in the comics anymore like the, the, the shit just drives me crazy because the flash is one of the coolest characters and they just totally sleep on him but anyways i feel like we're just, we're just gonna rant on batman this entire time but uh <laughs> back to spider-man or just uh marvel okay. in general is there certain story arcs you like of all time in comics mm. I'm trying to think. Oh, I stumped you. I stumped you. <laughs> yeah. um, so I like the Null stuff. I really think that was pretty good. Like okay. the, the King in Black, that was pretty good. All right. um, I really liked Absolute Carnage. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't Absolute Carnage. It was Maximum Carnage. My sure, bad. sure. Yeah, I, even I like that. Uh, he, Carnage is um, a cool character. Yeah, obviously Black and Black. I think that was probably one of the best Spider-Man storylines of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't remember exactly what the name of this comic was, but it was in the Ultimate Universe. And this is kind of like where my my unfiltered bias and hate towards Captain America stems from. Yeah. Um, I really don't hate him. I just hate him in this storyline. Yeah. Where uh, so basically what happens is Shield is thinking about recruiting Spider Man, but like everyone else is good for it except for Captain America. He's like ah, he's a child. He tro- he causes property damage, all this other stuff, and he ends up inherently getting Spider Man killed. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, that's a great storyline, but I really don't like Captain America for that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, there's, like, certain things that still, like, rub me the wrong way. Like, I'm still mad at Maria Hill. <laughs> like, from yeah, a yeah. Civil War One. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like, a decade now. It's I'm still angry at her for that, you know what I mean? I gotta let that shit go, but... And, and here's the thing. I'm trying to think whether or not my, my hatred for Captain Marvel in the comic books is kind of, like... I don't know, like, influencing my hatred for her in the MCU. Yeah. Oh, dude, I totally understand that. Like, when... Because I like uh, the girl that plays Maria Hill, Colby Smutters. She was in How I Met Your Mother, which is, like, one of my all-time mm-hmm. favorite shows. And I'd hate Maria Hill, so I'm like, God damn it. Like... Why are you here? <laughs> yeah, like, why did you have to play her? <laughs> like, any other character. <laughs> right, right. Um, But apparently, like, I don't know if you know this creator, Night King Quet or whatever. Uh, sounds familiar. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, probably saying his name wrong. Yeah. But uh, he ended up uh, having a conversation. with like, oh, why he, you know, doesn't like Captain Marvel in the MCU. And, you know, some of it was stemmed from what she's done in the uh, in the comics, like trying to arrest Miles Morales for something that he might do. Oh, wait, is that the that was the Civil War two arc, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, that whole arc was like bananas. Like, I remember I had to, like, right. I, I waited. I just gave up reading it and just waited for Comic Story and to finish <laughs> so i can just listen to it. I'm like i give up I, I completely understand that like it, it uh, gets too much man like i don't yeah. want to be like a jerk but there's just so much to read it's almost ex- it's exhausting there's no other way to like uh what was the big controversy like two years ago when it came to comics like in marvel what was that big thing where captain america was the nazi it was the ending of him being the nazi i forgot the name of that story oh uh, jesus uh you know what I'm talking about, though. It was, like, last... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, I just forgot exactly what it was called. Like, dude, that was just the, the longest and most exhausting reads of my life. Like, I, I, I kind of gave up on Marvel because I just, like, this really? is the best they had. Like, I just gave... I take that back. I was reading X-Men still because X-Men, like, I always have a small sp- uh, spot in my heart for X-Men stuff, but... Yeah, X-Men can basically do my, no wrong in my mind, except for, like, Scott Summers because I hate Scott Summers. I mean, I think everyone kind of hate well and envy in moral uh marvel versus capcom too i'm all right with scott summers <laughs> nah, that's a game it's <laughs> it a completely different thing um, yeah yeah uh but yeah like scott is just like he's just the unlikable boy scout of like the um the marvel universe like no one like he's just a pain in the ass he's always gonna yeah. be an issue and he also is the king of bad decisions like very very like the king of yeah. every bad decision that could have been made in the x-men it was scott's decision <laughs> like every right. single time it actually pulls into um to what I was talking about as far as like letting comic books kind of run my bias towards you know the MCU because mm-hmm. what I've noticed is that a lot of people give unfettered hate and blame towards Tony and the MCU, and what I notice is that like they're treating Tony and the MCU as if he's Tony in the comic books, mm-hmm. 
right? Because Tony in the comic books is, you know, he's a he's a jerk, yeah. and he does very very bad things. Mm -hmm. Um, he's still a hero, but he does do some bad things. But with the MCU, he does bad things in the pursuit of doing some good stuff, yeah. right? Oh, for so, sure. Yeah. So for Ultron, his literal like whole idea was I'm going to create a suit of armor around the world. That's a good idea. He just went about it. Mm -hmm. And if you pay people pay attention, he would have never went about it if Scarlet Witch didn't mess with his head. Oh, see, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, but people blame a lot of things on the, well, in the MCU on Tony as if it was, like, inherently his fault, which is not the case. I feel like people aren't paying attention to stuff, and they're just using their hatred for Tony in the comic books to, you know, influence their beliefs on Tony in the comic, well, in the MCU. So I'm trying to decide if that's what's happening with me and Captain Marvel, or is just Captain Marvel is just a terrible character. I'm going to be honest, I love the Captain Marvel movie. Like I know that sounds like I'm I'm one of the weird ones. I didn't have a problem with it at all with it at all. Hmm. Like, um, uh, I'm not even the cat scratch thing. What's that? Not even the cat scratch thing. Oh yeah, that's weird. I ain't alive. <laughs> there there is some problems with every single Marvel movie, right? Like everyone yeah. like says that like the first uh, Captain America movie is a snore fest. That's one of my favorite ones. Same thing with Ant Man and the Wasp. Ant, I, this is going to be a hot, hot fucking take. But Ant-Man and the Wasp is actually my favorite MCU movie. Because I like that's the, understandable. Like, that's the, I like the comedy in it. Um, uh, Johnny Hopkins, the, the guy who plays uh, the detective there, I love him mm -hmm. as a comedian, which really helps me. Like, I love his character. Um, I love the actor. I love, I mean, Paul Rudd, in my eyes, can't really do wrong. Um, like At over, age either. Yeah, like yeah, apparently, right? Um, but like Amanda I just found a fountain of youth. Um, I have uh like this this love for that style of movie. I love the heist esque type of style movies in general. Like I'm a big Ocean's Eleven fan. So like all that kind mm -hmm. of movies, I like that kind of style. So uh but it's it'll when you look at like lists of best Marvel movie to like worst to the uh, to the best, everyone immediately like will have Ant Man and the Wasp as one of the worst ones. You know what I mean? And I'm like but I love that movie. <laughs> like, so I, I, I guess I give a little more, uh, I look at things a little more opinionated and objectively when I'm judging what I like compared to mm -hmm. like, uh, for example, everyone loves Thor, the, uh, Ragnarok, right? Like it's our, everyone argues it's one of the best ones right up there with civil war. And, um, I'm going to be honest. Like I would actually put civil war is way better than Ragnarok. Cause that's me personally. I just, hmm. I just enjoyed it way more than I like civil war. I thought civil war, like I knew what was going to happen because they spoiled everything in the trailers. Like, Oh yeah. That, that just like, they should have just kept Spider-Man quiet. That yeah, not say, dude. Oh, I love what they're doing with the new trailers. Like how they're not giving us. Yeah, trailers. Don't show me nothing. I don't want to see a single care. thing, dude. I want to go into that theater being blindsided straight up blindsided. Right. I can't wait. And the fact they're doing that for us, if they admitted that dude, I'm, I can't tell you how excited like, I'm to see with that. the with the new Carnage trailer. Why did you guys show Scream? I know, like they. Oh, it's they, they, hey, spoilers if you guys didn't know this. <laughs> Be in the movie, but she's in the trailer. Yeah, like, oh. um. Also, like with the Marvel, um, uh, with uh, the Morbius movie from Sony, mm -hmm. like that they sh already showed the Vulture in it. They show like a in one of the things that you see Craven, like you actually on the side of one of the trucks, it says Craven's hunting bread or something like that. Some like company. Yeah, like there's so many, they need to take the, the no way home approach and stop showing. Yeah, us stuff. dude, they ruin shit so much. Cause you're showing us the whole movie at this point. Yeah. Like, um, I, I'm also done with like fast and furious movies. To, like it's a whole a different thing, but like, um, the last one where Han came back, like, why did you show that in the trailer? Why? Yeah, you could have, you, could have kept dude, that under wrap. Everyone would have lost their minds, literally lost their minds in the theater for the uh, the actual like uh, Fast and Furious people. They would have lost their minds if that happened in the theater. We need. What I'm starting to think is that these people, um, like these marketing people, don't necessarily realize that not showing stuff is actually going to get more people to go watch your movie. Oh, for real? Ex absolutely. Like as long as you market it like, hey, this is going to be a hype movie. This is what it's called. This is when it's coming out. Mm -hmm. and people generally know what it's like kind of is going to be about like we know spider-man is going to be in the home far from home yeah obviously. and then we kind of <laughs> got you know 
uh, hints about Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire coming back, and mm-hmm. then it was kind of confirmed, kind of. Yeah, they're, they're, but they're so that's all. Out. That's all you need at that point. Yeah, Don't keeping, show us nothing else. They're keeping all that shit under wraps, like dude. You know right. what? Really, like, like, they shouldn't have showed us the suits. Yeah, Don't, you know what? Nah. Lose my mind if they did this hmm. in Spider Man. I would lose my mind if this happened. But what if they somehow get like Ryan Reynolds in there and just do a cameo with Deadpool? Like, do you know how people would lose their minds over that kind of stuff? Oh yeah, dude. Like, because Spider Man, especially and, since him and Deadpool have a very good dynamic. Now the question is, which one would he? you know, kind of latch onto. I I would like, see, that's, that's the whole question with Deadpool just coming to the MCU. Very interested how they're going to do that. Cause like, they're, like whenever Deadpool's in the group with the Avengers or whoever Deadpool's with, he usually kind of reins it in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Is Ryan Reynolds, are they going to do that? If it got, like, if they, if they show up at like an end game type of situation with Deadpool there, like is Deadpool still going to be Deadpool? It's a question that I don't know how yeah. they're going to handle. I seriously have zero clue how that's going to work. They can't handle it the same way they've been doing it for the Fox films. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's just not going to work. Too many kids go watch those movies. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love the Deadpool movies. Absolutely love those movies. But I, I just can't see them do it. Like, characters like Falcon, as an example, would not blend at all with Deadpool. You know what I mean? Oh, no. The chemistry there is just, just weird. Because, uh, like, him and Bucky are just kind of pretty serious characters. You know what I mean? They do crack jokes yeah. and stuff. But their dynamic didn't does not fit at all with Deadpool. It's something that, like, I'm very curious how they're going to actually handle when they eventually bring him into the MCU. Because, man, that's a – I'm very curious what people have to say. In fact, anyone listening to this podcast, comment in the comments, please let us know what you think. How are they going to incorporate that? Because that's a weird question, man. It's a weird question. How are they going to even bring him into the verse? That's that's a good question. Yeah. Maybe they're going to. How are they going to bring their other mutants into the verse? <sighs> that's a. Are they? I, I, are they just going to start with a brand new collection of mutants now? That's a whole other thing. Like, well, does Sony does own Fox now, right? Um, I think Sony owns. The... No, no, Disney. So, oh, you mean Disney owns Sony? No, 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 Disney owns Fox. Yeah, well, yeah, they have all the Fox characters, but the, I think the only thing that Disney doesn't have right now is Spidey and the Spideyverse characters, like the villains. Yeah, so they already own those characters, so they're going to bring them in some kind, some way. So, ooh, it might be in Far From Home. Not Far From Home, but uh, Multiverse. No Way Home. Uh, I think that we'll see some very interesting things in Doctor Strange. Because Doctor Strange is going to be in that, that film, right? Yeah. Mm. I think I think we're gonna see a lot of Doctor Strange. That's something I'm actually yeah. really looking forward to. But all right, I do want to talk about some fighting games with you before I get out of here. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, we mentioned earlier, um, well, you and I have kind of been messing around with Injustice lately. If you're watching right mm-hmm. now, you're gonna you should be seeing Sly kick my ass in Dragon Ball Fighters right now. Um, but uh, so when did you start like? Uh, playing fighting games like what was your like your first fighting game that you started messing around with uh, so like i told you before i don't remember exactly which one it was i can't remember if tekken 3 came first or mortal kombat trilogy but i had both of those on the playstation uh the original one the freaking toilet looking one yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good so one, one of those came first i just can't remember exactly which one it is um but yeah it's out of those two yeah, um, I saw. I think it was uh, you made a TikTok where you named like your favorite nostalgic games, and I think you put MK, mm-hmm. I think you put both of those on there. And I think that's where like yeah, I actually am like, dude, I like this guy. I think that's where my initial follow <laughs> for you eventually came from because I think you've been following me on TikTok for a while already, and mm-hmm. I, you, like I I know that it's a decent video because Sly like Sly Mufasa actually commented on it. If it's a good video, you do. Other ones, you're like you just like and pass it, <laughs> which I totally understand. Um, but like I saw that and I'm like, I, I'm all about the FGC and fighting games, as you know. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, recently you joined my discord and stuff and we've been doing some matches. Uh, uh, is there any more recently? What other fighting games you've been getting into outside of Injustice? Because that's what we've been playing. I know... Ooh. Like what? Okay. Uh... Okay. Oh, guys, I like it cut out there. Oh, my bad. Well, what fighting games uh, uh, outside of uh, clear we've been playing in Injustice lately, but uh, what other fighting games have you played throughout the years that you've enjoyed? That I have enjoyed? Yeah. Or uh, ones at least so, like, you can, that like have like 
I don't know, I guess the memorable response. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher this name. Is Blaze Blue Chrono Trigger Phantasma? I think that's the full name for it. <laughs> uh, it's um, a Blaze Blue Central Fiction. I think is the one you're. Is that the one you're talking yeah. about? Yes. Uh, Chrono Trigger is a completely different game. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. It's some wild name. Sure. Uh, but uh, I got actually got into that one when I was in Okinawa. My buddy was like, "Hey, you should get this game," and it was like twenty bucks, and I got it, and I kind of whooped his butt. <laughs> first time i ever played it so that was good so i i think that's where my love from like arc system uh game started because that, that's made by them right yes they're very is, solid is that too. dragon ball and i think guilty gear that's made by them correct yes yeah um i played guilty gear uh zerd the um, third one i think uh exard or revelator yeah Exard the xrd one yeah, the XRD yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I call it these games. I, I think, yeah, dude, the names are garbage. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I call it Exard. Everyone has a different term, like Z- Exard. Everyone has a different name for it, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so that one's good. I have uh, Guilty Gear Strive. I was actually super excited when I heard that one's coming out, so I got on the beta. Um, yeah, and I played that. Oh, uh, freaking something that's cool for me because I never win anything. Or I never get picked for stuff. Is that when Mortal Kombat 11 had their closed beta going out, and you had to like sign up for it and hopefully get you know accepted to get into the beta? I actually got accepted into the beta, so that oh, was dude, cool that's for sick. me. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, uh, dude, if they do an Injustice three, and if like I don't get the beta, I'm gonna make 300 TikToks. You thought your Tobey Maguire thing was gonna go bad? I'm gonna <laughs> lose my mind if I don't get accepted into the Injustice three beta. I will lose my goddamn mind. I don't get accepted. Oddly enough, speaking of um, injustice, uh, and my love for comic books, I'm not gonna lie, I did not like that DC Mortal Kombat crossover game. I oh, I, I, I hated it. Dude, nobody did. <laughs> like, I own that, it. That's like the general thing, but it's yeah. it's weird for me because I love not only that company, but I love comic books too. So yeah. it's like uh, I should like this. Yeah. But I hate it. It was not done. It it was a rush game. It had a very small roster. Certain characters weren't even finished. Like, yeah. uh, like Mortal Kombat, obviously, I think the reason it's so popular is because of its gore, right? Like, the, they're course, very yeah. open with how gory the game is. They took out that aspect of it completely in that uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC game. And then, then they did Fatality still, but they called them, like, brutal finishers or whatever they called it. And like they that. were trash, man. Like, there's one where Kano literally just picks you up and throws you back down. That was his finishing. <laughs> it's, like, the most dumb thing on the planet. Like, they were better off just not doing anything. Now, there were some yeah. really cool things about it. Like, there's, like, I think it was, like, a chaos or rage mode that you had that was actually pretty cool. But it also, what people forget about, dude, that wasn't a 2D fighter. That was a 3D, 3D game. Like, you could move <laughs> backwards and forwards inside to side, which was almost like never done before in most Mortal Kombat games. So everyone was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, so, and I'm not going to lie. I really don't like like 3D fighters like that unless it's Tekken. Oh, I totally understand. Like, I, I, I'm sure you've seen my opinion on like arena fighters <laughs> in the past couple of years. Games like Jump like Fighters. Like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. I, 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 those games can die in a fire. Like, I hate those games so much. Like, I cannot tell you the last time I picked up a, a Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm game. I I just don't know. <laughs> well, like, there's that Demon Slayer game coming out, I think, next month. Like, I want to play it because I like Demon Slayer, but it's going to be Jump Force 2.0. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, so I, the only reason I'm getting that game is because it's Demon Slayer. Yeah, same, same here. Like, I'm, I'm going to have to pick it up because I'm the fighting game guy. But, like, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to. Like, I physically, it's going to pain me spending money on that thing. <laughs> It's going to hurt typing into Steam saying, yes, I want to buy this game. But the thing is, I could be wrong. They may have, like, eventually add some patches or something where they will, like, like cut down some of the boundaries and make it a more tighter game, and it may be worth it. Like, I still play Soul yeah. Calibur every now and then, and th- th- that's not Tekken. You know what I mean? People don't think about this. Right. Soul Calibur is definitely way more jump force than it is a Tekken game. So, um, but th- those are... Oh. I just hate those yeah. kind of games, man. Interesting just... enough, inter- interestingly enough, um, despite how much I love Mortal Kombat to like my very soul, mm-hmm. the only games I haven't touched are the ones that are kind of like the, the 3D fighters. I just don't like it. 
Oh no! And I think the graphics yeah. are terrible. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Going back to those, some of those games are hard, man. They're like the old two, like the ones that were like on the original, like on the Sega and the uh, like Super Nintendo. Dude, they're still pretty solid. Like they they, they still play oh, yeah. solid and shit. And then you get into the 3D era, you're like, dude, what the hell? Did... This is terrible. Like, but at the time when we were kids, like this this is the apex. Oh my god, this is the the best it's ever gonna get. <laughs> you're right. I don't know. It's just something about the uh. Like the actual pictures superimposed into a 16-bit video game that just works, yeah. and I don't know what it is. Because if you if you guys don't know that uh, all those classic Mortal Kombat's, like all the like the actual characters were actually like just pictures, yeah, of like actual people. Yeah, it was done like flaw. Uh, not to be corny here, it was done flawlessly at the time. Like it was one of the. It really was. It was done perfectly. So, uh, like I look at like uh, it was recently uh, the girl who played Sonya put the costume on again, and she looks literally identical from all those years ago. Like she looks like you can check her out on Twitter. I think the Sonya Blade like twenty or thirty years later, she looks almost identical. She's like in her like fifties, and she's killing it still. Yeah. It's just something magical about it. Like, um, and that's another thing that Mortal Kombat is actually pretty good with. They're very, really, they're very good with fan service when it comes to certain things. Yeah. Like, um, bringing back, I can't remember what his name is, but the the actual actor for Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 11, that was that was genius. Yeah. Um, I forgot his name, but he's played Shang Tsung and like he's done pretty much every single fighting game. He played Hai Hachi yeah. in the Tekken movie too, which is just hilarious. He's done that. We just need him to play something in street fighter now so he has the trilogy he has all three of them in uh, somehow all of them together that'd be absolutely awesome i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna get crucified by the uh the the fighting game gods but i do not like street fighter all that much yeah. um it is mainly for the reasons like i was telling you earlier um i just don't like the whole like push stop combat that it has to it and i don't know if i'm explaining that right like the you hold but, back then hold forward type of nonsense well no it's like um like after every hit, there's like a pause to it, and to me, it doesn't flow well, and it actually kind of like it breaks my concentration when I'm sitting there and I can't move for a good yeah. two to three seconds. Uh, Obviously, some weird recovery all I, when all I did was block, and yeah. I should be able to punish. I so. totally understand. Uh, getting into Street Fighter, you just gotta understand it's a little bit of a sl- I don't want to say slower because there's certain characters that are just as fast as like your Black Manta. You know what I mean? In uh, yeah, in Street Fighter, but like. Every time I load up a fighting game, I, like, pretend I'm, like, this is the first time I'm playing it almost. So, like, when I pick up Street Fighter, like, I, I'm i playing a different game. I just have to put my brain in, like, I'm playing a different game than I would be playing Injustice or playing Mortal Kombat or playing Tekken. I just try to, like, get in that mindset this is a different game. So, like, no different from, like, when I'm playing Fortnite or playing Call of Duty. You know what I mean? Like, it's a different – I got to know it has the same – a lot of the similar things – but I'm playing a different game. That's something that I've learned throughout the years. Because, like, um, back when I was a kid, when I was playing Tekken, I thought it was, like, a god because every single kid played Eddie Gordo. You know what I mean? Oh, my God. <laughs> every single person. The confidence we have playing Eddie Gordo as a kid is just huge. But, like, I remember switching from that and going to play Killer Instinct, which is very similar to Street Fighter oh, in yeah. that respect. And I'm like, this is, man, like, I'm trying to do Eddie Gordo moves and pressing the, like, the bottom two buttons because that's, you know what I mean? That's what Eddie does. Yeah. And Try like, to throw kicks out. Yeah, and it's not doing the same. And I had to learn that, like, this is a different game. And because I've been pl- – fighting games have always been part of my life since I was a little kid. So um, I've learned throughout the years it's just a different thing. But I totally understand having a different reaction to Street Fighter. Totally yeah. understand. And I try that. to give it a fair shake every time. So, like, every time there's a new game, I try to pick it up. Yeah. Like, I basically bought Street Fighter Five for, like, no reason because I never touch it. Yeah. But. Well, I did too. Like, I picked it up because obviously I, I need it for content, and, like recording videos and stuff. But I, uh, I barely touched it until I had a couple friends like, "Do you want to play Street Fighter?" And they bodied me the first time we played. Like, I'm like, "Well, can't let that shit slide." So I'm gonna, like, just start practicing hardcore. Like, look at you the other day with Injustice. Is like, you actually messaged me. You don't understand, Phil, what you just put yourself through. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty sure if like. Like, if I was to play you and just get destroyed and get pissed off enough, I'm pretty sure I would become a god <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. in, like, a short amount of time. Yeah. So You're very, like, one thing I will say, the few matches we've played, like, you will, uh, you learn what works and what doesn't pretty quickly. Like, uh, like 
you learned how to back up and like if I do something you're like okay I'm gonna follow the same combo because that worked last time I like facing you because it makes me play that, that game of like 3d chess where like I have to like oh well, he did one move so I can't do it the same way I gotta try something new well that didn't work either let's try something different I had to get to a point where I'm like all right well I guess I'm picking up a new character just to deal with your character <laughs> Which is not the first time I've done that with friends. I'm like, all right, well, I'm only playing this character against you now because I don't know how to beat <laughs> beat you. Any other way. Now I feel bad because I had to have somebody pick a whole new character <laughs> trying to beat my black man. And I gotta, I gotta learn a new character. Um, but yeah, so I kind of just took that kind of philosophy. Um, I guess I kind of always had it in the back of my head, but Maximilian kind of solidified it. Yeah, Max is. It's like you don't need to learned like super long stringy combos and all these other punishes and stuff just to be good at fighting games you just need to learn how to pick your timing right mm -hmm. if you pick your timing right it doesn't matter what you do very much so uh, I, i've been in the same situation uh uh that's a good question we'll uh, finish up on this uh what content creators do you like uh, youtube so... Twitch, whatever Na name them all like who are some people you look up oh to? on twitch Oh, everything. Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I don't know. Who, who are the people you really uh, get into? Uh, so, uh, Maximilian, dude, obviously, for uh, <laughs> for just a general fighting game, because he does play more than one game. Mm -hmm. um, Dato Doya, when I was super, 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 super heavy on uh, All right. Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, and I think he's playing uh, Shadow, Samurai Shadow. Uh, uh, Samurai Shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think he's mainly like a Dragon Ball Fighters dude. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously King Lion on TikTok, comics related, Shango Sims, <sighs> just a lot of people. Uh, Zombie Bob, you, again. Thank uh... you. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, the freaking, and then you know some of my friends that do Twitch, like um, I forgot her name, but Caldron is one of them, which is just K A L. D U R E N and uh Miss Seth. So like you say like Miss with mm. two e two S's and then E T H. Oh like Seth uh, as in Star Wars Seth? Yeah, and it's actually I don't know why I said E, it's I T H. It's Miss like legit Miss Seth. Oh that's um, pretty that's an awesome name. Yeah. <laughs> that's an awesome name. Um yeah, that's super sick, dude. I actually may go follow yeah. her just because uh, of the name. <laughs> yeah, she's 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 a she's a sweetheart. She's dope. Yeah. Uh she gets super scared a lot though. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and here's the thing. so, like I said, I love fighting games, and this is not a, obviously a, not a content creator, but uh, if you haven't seen this anime, I highly recommend it. It's called High Score Girl. Oh, dude, I love that! It was one of my f absolute yeah. favorites. Yeah, so if you haven't seen that anime, I think it should still be on Netflix. Uh, I think you guys should go check it out, especially if you like Street Fighter. I, that's you like know what? Thing. That's gonna be a YouTube video. That's gonna be one of my TikToks tomorrow. Thank you for <laughs> giving me that idea. That's such a great <laughs> yeah, idea. Because no there's really like no fighting game content, like movies. There's like zero. That's actually a great. Thing. Oh yeah, no. Thank you for that idea. I'm gonna definitely yeah, make no that. Problem. <laughs> um, but yeah. all right, dude. Like we're coming up on an hour, like in two minutes. So uh, let's uh, plug, oh, wow. let's do some plugs. What do you, what are some things you wanna plug? Like where can people find you, man? Uh, so you can find me on literally anything possible as sly mufasa yeah that's so like just S L Y M U F A S A, right yeah just think sly as in sly cooper and mufasa as mufasa from lion king is literally just the two halves put together that's um I, and you, my, that's my name on everything <laughs> yeah awesome uh I, guys if you're listening to this uh, i highly recommend you go watch sly uh give him a uh, question him when it comes to all of his theories on comic books uh, he, he will definitely respond in a timely manner. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, do you have anything else you want to say before we get out of here, man? Um, so I just kind of want to uh, pick back up on your point about, like, Elseworlds stories. Sure. Um, and I kind of want to recommend one if people haven't probably oh, known this because yeah, Lois sure, Lane doesn't really get a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and I forget exactly what the Elseworlds comic is called, but it's basically after uh, Superman dies fighting Doomsday, um, Lois Lane basically gets superpowers and like kind of goes on a rampage. Um, so if you haven't read that book, I would rec I would recommend that because, like I said, Lois Lane doesn't really get that much in comic books, and you know, I think she should because she's an interesting character, and that's it. Awesome! <laughs> I'm actually gonna go look that up right now. 
But uh, yeah, all right, Sly. Thanks for having. Um, well, thanks for having me. I was going to say the opposite. Thanks for having me, uh, dude. Th- uh, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, thanks for being my first guest. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And that's about it. Don't forget to follow Sly on all social media plats that he mentioned. For those who don't know, I stream on Twitch every Sunday and Tuesday. Come and hang out. I also have a TikTok account where you can follow all of my FGC sketches. Don't forget about my Patreon. I have a bunch of new tiers where you can even be featured in my YouTube videos. All of those links will be down below along with all my social media tags. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And, of course, I'll talk to you guys soon.